Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. Today we are here, I'm your host JJ, and we are here today with Mark Peters and Nissan. They're located in Indonesia. They are um, at Bamboo Sanusa Verde. And as I've seen, um, Mark has uh, the anniversary today, 14 years um, with Bamboo Nusa Verde. Is this true, Mark? Oh, you know more than I do, but that <laughs> must come from, from LinkedIn. Uh, that I wrote when I started it, so that's true, 14 years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So nice. congratulations that's and welcome to the podcast. Great yeah. to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, too. <laughs> You're welcome. So um, I'm, I'm happy we found some time to talk to talk about bamboo and overall more focus on bamboo and Nusa Verde. So um, Mark, maybe you can give us a, a like quick introduction how everything started. How did you get from you're originally from Belgium? How did you get to the other side of the world? And, and uh, how come you're now into this big bamboo business? <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Jago. The, it, in fact, I came to Indonesia a long time ago, four to five years ago. But then I was a telecom guy. So I built up the telecom ne network in Indonesia. And then after 30 years, um, they offered me a job in China. Uh, but I didn't like to go there. So uh, I said, OK, yeah, I will continue to do something in Indonesia. And then by accident, uh, I heard that there is a Belgian company making bamboo in Indonesia, which I thought, wow, I'm already 30 years here in Indonesia and I don't know this company. Now this company was only located 34 kilometers from my hometown in Belgium. So uh, that's why, uh, since I was looking for something and I wanted to do something green, I was thinking of solar cells, wind and all that to make, uh, to do something better for nature and all that. So then I thought bamboo is maybe something. So then I met the owner of uh, this Bamboo uh, Nusaverde in uh, in the north of Antwerp, and that is Jan Oprins, who is the pioneer of making bamboo tissue culture. So initially we met, and then he said, "Well, oh, a telecom guy that is not so interesting." Uh, but I say, "Wait, wait, wait! Uh, maybe I'm 30 years in Indonesia. Maybe I know something more about Indonesia. I don't know. I don't know anything about bamboo." And then it took a year because then I went back uh, to Belgium and I thought I, I go and go again to Jano Prince. And then he said, I remember you. I was several times thinking of you, why we don't try. So then uh, I joined. And then in fact, uh, what convinced me the most was uh, that we went to the World Bamboo Congress in Bangkok in 2009. And there um, the whole Chinese, Bamboo experts were there and from the rest of the world. And then I saw, wow, Jan is really special because the whole world came to him because he was doing tissue culture on a large scale commercially in Belgium. And then I said, well, he has something nobody else had at that moment. So that's uh, what convinced me, in fact, that we have something special that uh, he put here because he came to Indonesia due to the big bamboos that are here. The idea was make a laboratory and make Indonesia green and export from Indonesia to tropical bamboo species because it's impossible to make in Belgium. Jan has the same facility, um, tissue culture in Belgium, but there it's only for ornamental plants. So here it's really the big bamboo for industrial applications that we make. So then, okay, then I step in and then, yeah, then I started to be bitten by this bamboo virus. And that's uh, what I'm still bitten by today. And also, that's why Nisa, she got also the virus. So together, we, we do it with another college, but she's outside because on the same moment of this uh, presentation, we have a planting uh, event with uh, universities. So we split up the jobs. So we are here. So that's, in fact, why, why, I, came to, why I came to Bamboo. And why is Bamboo tissue culture is because there are selling seeds. And we give a solution that we can make a mass production of bamboo plants here behind us in the laboratory and in the climate. So that's where uh, it all started. So Nisa is with us uh, five years now. Yeah, five years. So she knows all about the technical things. She goes deep in it. 
in uh, together we can discuss many things. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Mark. That's really a, a great um, introduction, how everything started and, and to get a good understanding regarding, um, I think we can say the USP here is clearly the bamboo tissue culture because of bamboo being so challenging also like to reproduce on a large scale, um, like if it's not natural, right? This is one of the big challenges we, we face. Yeah, it's true. And everybody say use bamboo, use bamboo, but we should not forget, uh, like uh, many of the seniors say, we have also to plant bamboo. And that's many times the, 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 the problem here. Everybody say we can make paper, we can make ply plywood and all that, but you have to have a large area with bamboo. Uh, and it takes time. And it takes time. Area, no? Take time, and then you uh, need the right methods and all that. So it's 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 a big, it's a big thing. Yes. <laughs> but it's very interesting, yes. of course. That's the the positive yes. part. <laughs> so, yeah. um, regarding yeah. the tissue culture, um, can you share some numbers, maybe? Um, how many uh, plants or how many seedlings are you producing? I think you have some seedlings here. You can share with us in a jar. This would be uh, amazing. Yeah, also one outside. You can take one outside. Yes, so yes. The, the small one that we normally send oh, to the customers. Our so, view. Um, what? Yeah, we have still uh, we have still something to show coming in now. Oh, no, so the the thing we make we make in the laboratory to understand the tissue culture. Uh, I thought and many say, "Why well, it's easy? It's not easy you know, because bamboo is a, a primitive plant. It's the grass, the giant yeah. grass." So. Yeah, to to make uh, tissue culture, uh, it is that is uh, it's 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 the the main problem is that there is bacteria already from the beginning in this plant. So the bacteria will come out during the production, the initiation, starting to make an, an bamboo uh, ready for production. It is a lot. There is it is a it's very difficult. If I, I tell you, we had uh, in uh, two years ago. We made a record how many we really could make ready for production. And that was 0.6%. So we tried 10,000 plants and we had only a flu that, that go into production. So that is uh, one of the challenges. That's also why you don't find many, many companies that, that make uh, uh, bamboo tissue culture on a commercial uh, basis. Scale. Also, on the other side, we make more than 40 different species. Too many to be, but we have because we have customers who want to have the bamboo, an ornamental bamboo. We ship that to Australia, we ship that to Europe, where it's colder climate, so this the bamboo doesn't grow in the tropics. Here then you have different species. We have even been asked to, to help uh, to come make a conservation of uh, species that are nearly extinct to get them back in, in a mass, mass production yards. Well, we, uh, we had this morning again a discussion on that. Of, of to safeguard the the the, the environment uh, also the, the the species that are getting of bamboo. extinct. So, Regarding bamboo, but, always no. right? Yeah, yeah. Because we have like the yes. thousand four hundred universe of, of bamboo yes. species, so it's it's huge, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but also also the the people see that we do this. It's a lot of research. Eh? Our fiction in you know, initially was uh, research and development of this this. Uh, uh, tissue culture. So that is where uh, we did years of that. And now, of course, we, when we start to produce, we also sell. So to give you an idea, for the moment, we can still produce more than we can sell. Yeah, okay. Funny enough. So we produce, average coming out of the, the laboratory, it's uh, uh, 50,000 a month. But 50, we can go. 50,000 seedlings a month. What, what you're producing right now, right? Yes, yeah, that's what we do now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but we can increase that uh, easily. But yeah, we have to sell also because the, by COVID we didn't sell. Can you imagine? The, the nursery was full. We had 500,000 plants there. Oh my so God. this is challenging. So is On the other hand, yeah. yeah. It's the true result. So we have to, to get a balance. So now we hope that we get an order and then we can really make a planning. Okay, we can deliver that, 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 that. And regarding so, a technical so, question here, so quickly, Mark, um, when you produce like the 50,000 uh, bamboo seedlings, how long can you keep them yeah. there? Because they grow, <laughs> right? So how long can yeah. you keep them there before yeah. you have to sell them? 
Yeah. So uh, I hope you can see this. Yes, it looks like a it's salad, really nice. but actually it's 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 tiny, tiny bamboo <laughs> seedlings. <laughs> That's right. So here in the jar, I don't know, Nisa, you you know more. How many are inside? Uh, th this is actually only three plants, but one plant, one clump of bamboo consists of at least 20 cones. So it's a lot actually. So and by the next month, we will have double the number. Mm. So that's why we can produce a high number of plants. We can move. This is the multiplication stage. Wow. So we have a lot. So okay. only three plants in this pot, in this salad is three plants originally. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And regarding the equation, how long can we keep them? It, this, it actually depends on the quantity of order. So, uh, for example, if we have stock of 1,000 and the order for 10,000, so we need to multiply it first until it reach the quantity. And by the final stage, we will put them in the rooting medium. And it will look like this. <laughs> you might not see it very clearly, but there's yep. already Close. the white thing roots. or the roots. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So it's the roots are already induced and it will need only a month in here. But it, we are not shipping the plants in this size because the risk is too high and you need to, to have special facility to grow it. So we plant it outside first. And for uh, abroad, we usually ship the plants around four or five months old. Four so it's already months. hard enough. Okay. It, wow. it will look like this. So wow, the, with the, beautiful. So you need to, to get soil or, or compost or organic matter. You have the plant there, the roots grow a little bit more, and then you ship it as bamboo seedlings of, yes. what is it, about 15 centimeters? About 30 high? centimeters. About 30, 30, 20, 30, 30 centimeters. 20, 30 centimeters. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. That's the hunt. Okay. And yeah. how do you manage the, the challenge with the organic matter? Because, I mean, we're talking about 50,000 possible plants a month so if we if we calculate like uh the 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 size you showed me here this is like a, a big cup of of coffee of soil you need a lot of soil there right i mean do you have like a big hole or <laughs> no <laughs> you have to buy soil or do you do compost or we we grow them in trays so it's like small size but the final stage will be in the poly bags so it's not we in our land it's less than two hectare we can save around one a million plants a million bamboo so, so, so it's we, like a, a poly bag is like this 10 centimeter in diameter yeah and there you will grow go until 80 centimeter one meter and then it's ready to go to the to the plantation the but before that price. yeah you, we have to grow from this yeah into trays but as a, again, a special environment, uh, high temperature, high humidity, until it gets the size of this uh, 30 centimeter. And then we, what we can do, or we put them in a poly bag, then they grow up in the nursery, here, or we ship them to the customers where they grow up until they can be planted in the field. Wow, wow, that's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So the, the entire process, um, maybe from like the day you, you pick the, from the first jar, to um, where you have the seedlings, how how long is that within your operation? Uh, you until until ready to ship from out of the lab yes. until ready to ship. Yeah. Um. Uh, it takes for the four or five months old. Yeah. Four or five export, months time. For export, no, no, five, yeah. for export okay. but for in Indonesia, Indonesia mm -hmm. market, we usually distribute plants that are already one year old because we have, okay. we want to make sure that it has very good uh, yes very yeah, they're bigger than, because, yeah um, yeah <laughs> yeah i get the, it <laughs> our customer in indonesia is mostly from mining Industry. company yes. that they want to plant bamboo for rehabilitation yeah. so sometimes the soil is very poor so and with the need, like, big stronger roots plant and, yes yes yeah, I totally get you. Yeah, because there the soil is really deploy, uh, very low and you need already plants who can like survive for a while until they start really um, growing naturally. Yeah. And the small ones, we, can, we cannot ship the, the big plants because 
the volume is too high, so it's the high cost in the transport. Yeah. So that's why we think uh, we yeah, in one box is it, we put how many three thousand or two thousand five hundred. Uh, two around two thousand two thousand five hundred in a box we can one ship. Box. Wow. So it's, so it's a seventy cent seventy eight centimeter by thirty five uh, at forty, and that's they two thousand plants on. And they have to fly by air, obviously, because they can't be like yeah. three months in a container with different temperatures. Oh, no, we, no, no. we never tried that. that. We never tried that. <laughs> no. But, uh, normally, we, uh, for example, we pack uh, Saturday. Uh, it flies out uh, Sunday night uh, because we go. We there is no international flight from uh, Jakarta, uh, oh, Central so yeah. Java. It has to go to Denpasar, and then Denpasar it flies out to all over the world. So. It means that uh, Monday is normally on, at the location, and then Wednesday normally it's already planted in the nursery over there. So it's wow. a very small, it's only four years. So we have a success rate up to 99%, more than 99% of the plants were successful. So this is um, this didn't go in one year, eh? I tell you. We worked uh, several years to find, to find, also we have to see where it goes, transit, what is the temperature there, which airplane, how we put what box we do, what uh, so we designed our own transport boxes just to have optimal survival on the plants. And and uh, a technical or uh, sustainable uh, specific question. You mentioned the poly bags, um, which are um, poly, ST, whatever plastic and um, derivative, right? I've seen yeah. there are now some like. Um, um, biodegradable um, bags too. Do you have them in Indonesia? Or are they too expensive, or or is it something for the future? I, I think we better talk about the future because, of course, it is already existing in in uh, in overseas. But here, it is rare, so it's very expensive. And very the, rare. the but also the plastic we use is already recycled plastic. So if you if you use it for a year or two, the plastic already starts to Pulverize, uh, uh, yeah. this yeah. So, but uh, the, really, the one the biodegradable, uh, uh, we don't have it. Okay, okay, but it's it's good. It's the thing to yeah. know regarding. I mean, in in Europe, you know, uh, there is a lot of talk and and about all those biodegradable plastics and all that. But it's much more expensive, of course, and you need chemicals, specific chemicals, which are only available in a few places and all that. So it's it's complex. So. Yeah. Let's talk maybe a little bit about the rehabilitation um, um, approach of uh, the part of your operation, which is one of the big clients you have, right? This coal, ex-coal mine um, thing where basically they they work, they they extract minerals, they they like they really damage probably the the soil. And then um, you come with the bamboo and you regenerate this within a few years do you have the numbers there um you can talk about or like uh, stories uh, you can share i mean this is uh, we, we, yeah we uh, um yeah since commercially it started in fact uh, 2010 after i was here and then uh, there was uh, one one of the biggest biggest coal mine uh, in indonesia it's in uh, kalimantan uh, and uh, they came and they asked, uh, what, what do you think of bamboo? Because we tried hundreds of different of trees. Originally, when, when you excavate the coal, this is an open coal mine, open then area. later on you have to close the coal mine. It's a pit one, right? A it's, it's a huge yes. crater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yes. seen that. And it's, oh, and it's they close dusty. it down, they level it. It's dusty around and you, you can't see very far because there is so much dust and it's yes. crazy. Yeah, it's like... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. So what they said, you know, we tried hundreds of different uh, uh, trees because originally they specified that when you do a coal mine in a certain area, which is 99% is a forest that you put out the trees, but that you have to plant again the trees there. The same and that trees. fails. <laughs> the same, and they don't grow they because don't there grow is anymore. no topsoil. No they soil cannot grow. Yeah. Everything is gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing that can grow is grass. So mm -hmm. what can grow is a giant grass, is bamboo. bamboo. So that's why that's a pioneer plant that make them green again. And then they can later on they can Better. plant trees in between. But originally, uh, what they tried planting trees didn't work, planting bamboo works, and now we are looking 
to add trees, but it's it's totally green. Huh? It's very so we have quite a lot of success with coal mining, but also with uh, gold mining, copper mining. Uh, and then this is uh, where they see that all the other efforts with other trees doesn't work because again the topsoil there is nothing. It's eighty centimeter, fifty centimeter, and then again bamboo can be can establish himself, and then yeah, it makes it the the leaf litter is there. If the soil will be improved due to the litter, the water will, the retention in the soil will go up. So everything starts to be better mm -hmm. again. That's, that's amazing. I mean, this is this is really fantastic. And I mean, there's so much mining operation ongoing. So uh, let's hope that more and more will focus on really solutions uh, which, which can uh, work. And one of them for sure is bamboo because it's a grass and because it, it grows so fast and because it filters everything and it regenerates the soil. So um, this is, I mean, this, this is absolutely super cool. Um, yeah, maybe I've one additional item. We also uh, try to plant uh, bamboo on degraded in polluted soil. So where there is X mining, yeah. so then the bamboo absorbs the heavy metals into the bamboo itself. So there is also a cleaning of the soil on that. Yeah. So then we, we're gonna do trials. Uh, with some, with the university to prove that is how it works in Indonesia. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it because yeah, it, it's it's not every plant can really work with minerals which are not endemic to the soil, like from the gold operational and all that. They they have a lot of heavy metals there, and just very few plants are able to to like live or thrive even in such a environment. And bamboo is one of the one of them. Another one which is interesting is vetiver grass. Um, but I mean, the bamboo is uh, much bigger and, and, and everything. So, um, yeah, um, we had another um, interesting um, topic there, which was green gold, the big picture. Um, do you have maybe some words about that, Mark? <laughs> yeah, this, uh, in fact, uh, we, we cooperated with uh, another gentleman. Um, uh, Iqbal is his name, he had uh, I grow, and um, he was already in favor of bamboo. He saw that for Indonesia as a solution. So um, he came up with this graph, and I said, Yeah, that is really the presentation, in fact, of the green gold, the big picture, because there is all the parties that are involved uh, uh, saying, Okay, that we are. Uh, the, um, we are the makers of the plants. That is the initial part. This is the nursery. Huh? So the, we have the tissue culture, we have the nursery, and then we have the plantation. This is the start, the on farm, what we have to establish to make it work. And that is the part. And then what we're going to do if the bamboo plantation is working, what we're going to do? We, huh? we can make end products. What are end products are there? It's for energy, it's for uh, what is it in the for feedstock? We can use pharmaceuticals. We can do pulp, paper, textile. It's all possible. We can make energy, a lot of energy. Uh, we are selling a lot of plants for uh, making uh, energy. But then, okay, who? What is the impact of the environment? The impact of the environment, yeah. There is a social impact because we create a new job in China. There are millions of families that are working on bamboo. So here we can give something back that with they is not existing but the bamboo can bring that yeah? so there, there is, it will be an empowerment of the people that are living there then there is the environment impact it um, it is co2 uh, absorbs co2 it is better for the soil all this good environmental impact but how are we going to do that there has to be money uh, we cannot do that we cannot do that alone we can only make produce the city and then we have to look who can where can be the net uh, the the financing comfort to make this really an, an part of the implementation. And that is also key. So there is a social corporate responsibilities. There is crowdfunding. There is all this time of partnership, uh, green fund. Uh, all this is possible that they look to these companies who have, because this morning we had a company here, one of the biggest companies uh, in, in Indonesia, unfortunately. They, they they make a lot of secrets, but but also they are looking to <laughs> to to do green to make green, yeah. And then of course 
How to do that? We have to do a networking. We cannot do that alone. So it's better we work with an, an NGO or we are, uh, the government. If the government can be convinced, then government regulation can be implemented. Social development goal is all there eh? because we have 14 of the 17, I think, um, uh, development is, goals where yes. bamboo is really in, yeah, where absolutely. bamboo can be in. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And then on top of that, of this big picture, there is still the carbon, the carbon set off. The carbon set off. Bamboo is one of the best carbon set off plants in the world because all the litter, the leaves, every every year new clumps. So it's much quicker absorbing carbon in compared to, to trees. And also it's regarding that is the, the first 24 months of the growth of the plant where it, the carbon sequestration happens even more than after. So it happens really fast compared to a tree where yes. we have to work 40 years. I mean, what's 40 years compared to 48 years, uh, 48 months, right? I mean, it's 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 a huge yes, difference. No, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, yes, it's, no, it's, it's, that's, I mean, this is so much and I've seen your presentation, Mark, and um, I mean, it, it, it has almost no limits, right? We can use bamboo everywhere. Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plant of the future. I think uh, uh, Europe uh, restricts uh, import of wood. Yeah. Okay, what you're gonna do? You still need a door. You still want to have a furniture. So where you can get it from? From a bamboo because you don't you don't, don't have harm it. the bamboo. You have exactly. and if you like it because you will make new, new shoots. So is there is something sustainable forever and until uh, yeah, okay until it the plant flowers or dies, but then there is another one. So it's exactly. again um, it grows sustainable. Fast. Future. But we have to plant it, and yes. we need the plant. So there is Musa uh, bamboos, bamboo Musa Verde, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, one thing I had, we have like four minutes left, but one thing I wanted to mention, which was like also mind blowing for me, was rattan for bone replacement. Now rattan is something like the cousin of bamboo. It's not bamboo, but it's quite um, like. Uh, let's say familiar with bamboo. And um, I've seen you're like working on one side project where um, theoretically you could use rattan for bone replacement instead of using again, heavy metals, titan or aluminum or whatever they put in the body if they have to replace a bone, which is natural. Why not use something natural, right? I mean, I was like, wow, this is, this is really smart, you know? <laughs> this is what, how, how things should, should be. Um, so um, yes. I'm, this is the first time also I, I read about it. So um, it's not like, I mean, I have to mention it. This is just, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's true. Huh? Yeah. We, we rolled into this, uh, you, you have uh, Inbar, uh, Ratan and Bamboo, uh, but we rolled into this during a seminar. And when the, the Italians is coming from Italy, they said that we want to have sustainable uh, um, maybe a plantation or so. So, but then uh, the first question was, what rattan will you use? Yeah. And uh, they knew it was only coming from Indonesia. We didn't know. So we we selected from different islands, different species, and then uh, we, we we sent to them for trial. So there is really, but again, uh, like uh, to make the story of this uh, bone replacement good, they have to tell that we plant it uh, sustainable for the future because the rattan that they use is 15 years and then you can harvest. Can you imagine? And it's one time, not like a bamboo. It's you, there is only one, yeah. one, one, one kiln and that is, it can be used. So wow. they have to plant and that is a little bit of a problem also uh, that it's not uh, done uh, in sufficient way. It's yeah. not an endless from but material like bamboo. Great. Let's say, yeah, you yeah. have really to think ahead. If you need 15 tons of rattan, you have to plant and, and wait 15 years. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that, that takes a, a difference from bamboo. Mm -hmm. Bamboo yeah. is uh, quicker. Bamboo is quicker and yeah. we can do continuous harvesting. By harvesting bamboo, we mm -hmm. give it more energy to the plant because it can focus more on new shoots and the entire cycle, yes. we can speed it up. So, yes. um, so yeah, bamboo is the winner here. <laughs> In, yes, in, true, in, true. Absolutely. So um, we have. No, yes. Yes, sorry. No, Continue. no. Just wanted to say we have like one oh. minute and twenty seconds left. So um, I give you the the microphone for the last minute if you want, and um, you can share maybe something regarding the future you're working on um, specifically. 
Yes, thank you very much uh, to uh, invite us for on Think Bamboo. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, somebody takes this up to uh, to launch uh, regularly uh, uh, discussions on bamboo. But uh, again, I hope that by uh, it's again the same. Uh, we use bamboo a lot, but we have to be sustainable. We we think sometimes, oh, it's easy, it will grow again. It grows again. But if we want to make an industry, then we need to need to really uh, serious planning to make a plantation. Then they're going to say. Uh, it cannot be monoculture. There is a lot of monoculture. You can still mix the bamboo plantation with, uh, with others. But this is, again, we, we have to see in the future. The, the future is plant bamboo on a massive scale. It's also carbon sequestration. It will make uh, our world a little bit greener and a, bit of, a little bit cleaner. So we are here to help. So anybody who wants to have more information, um, they can contact us. They can contact NISA. And then we can elaborate more on all the application because for all the applications to convince our customers, most of the time 